If you're using JVTs to authenticate users, they're likely sitting in local storage, keeping people logged in. And on the surface, they seem secure, right? But what if I told you a hacker could steal them without breaking your encryption in under three clicks? In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how attackers steal your tokens using XSS and how you can completely shut them down. I'll walk you through an example of exploit, then we'll fix it. Let's go. We'll create a simple app that uses JWTS for authentication. One page for login, one for a dashboard. We'll store the JWT in local storage, just like thousands of apps are still doing it. Then I'll inject some JavaScript, steal the token, and use it to log in as the user without their password. After that, we'll explore four ways to stop this. Use HTTP-only cookies, add a content security policy, CSP, sanitize user input, and use sub-resource integrity. I'll create a new project directory on my computer and we'll name it token demo and open it with a code editor, Visual Studio Code in my case. Now, let's create our main file. Right-click in the Explorer panel and create a new file called index.html. This will serve as our login page. I'll start by setting up the basic HTML structure. Get it a title as token app. And for the login form itself, we'll add a heading that says login as an H1 element. Then we'll create a form with the ID login form, which we'll use in our JavaScript. Inside the form, we'll add two input fields, a text input for the username with ID username and a password input with the same ID. Both will have placeholder text and their required attribute to ensure users fill them out. Below the inputs, we'll add a submit button that says login. Now for the JavaScript functionality. We'll add a script tag right in our HTML file for simplicity. First, we'll select our form by its ID and add a submit event listener. When the form is submitted, we'll prevent the default form submission behavior with prevent default. Create a fake JVT token using BTOA to encode a simple user object. Store this token in local storage under the key JVT. Redirect to a dashboard page, which we will create it in a minute. The fake token contains a demo user object with username demo and an expiration time. In a real application, this would come from your backend server after verifying credentials. Remember, this is just for demonstration purposes in a production environment. You would need proper server-side authentication. All right, let's build the dashboard page. Inside head, just a title for now. And in body, add a heading element and an empty paragraph with ID user. Now for the JavaScript part, grab the JVT token from local storage, and if it's missing, redirect back to login. If we have a token, decode it from base64 and display the username in that paragraph. Just a simple authentication check. To run this, the quickest way is to use an extension. Click on the Extensions tab or press Ctrl, Shift, and X, then search for Live Server and install it. Once installed, go back to the Explorer tab and you'll now see a Go Live button in the bottom right corner. Just click it to launch the project. Here we have the index page with our login form. Let's see what happens if we try to access the dashboard page directly. As expected, we're redirected back to the index page because no token was found. For login, you can actually use any username and password combination, but I'll use demo with a random password. And now, success. We're redirected to the dashboard page. Right now, our authentication token is stored securely in local storage. We can verify it's working. As long as we don't clear our cookies, the dashboard stays accessible. But if we try opening the dashboard in incognito mode, we'll get redirected back to the login page just like we'd expect. Now to demonstrate the attack, let's create a new file called steel.js. This is the script. First, we import Express and initialize our app. This gives us a server we can configure. Next, we enable Course. This allows requests from any origin, which is useful for testing but should be restricted in real cases. Now, we define a get route at slash steal. When someone visits this endpoint with a token parameter, the server logs it and sends a response. Finally, we start the server on port 3001 and log a message so we know it's running. To run the script, let's run in the terminal npm init-y, then npm install express, and finally node steel.js. The server is now running and ready to capture tokens. 
Before implementing this in our app, let's test it with a fake token. Keep this terminal open and launch a new terminal window. In the new terminal, run this curl command to simulate a token request. Now let's check our server terminal. You can see it successfully captured the token. To implement this in our app, return to the dashboard page and open Developer Tools. You can press F12. Then execute this command in the console. If we check our server terminal again, you'll see we've successfully captured the token from our application. Now what we can do with this token is use it to log in as that demo user directly, without ever knowing their password. Let's open incognito mode and developer tools. Without injecting the token, we keep getting redirected to the login page. Run this command. And finally, we have successful login as that user directly using their token. Let's look at some ways. How can we prevent this? HTTP only cookies. First, stop storing tokens where JavaScript can reach them. Instead of local storage, use HTTP only cookies. These are server set cookies that browsers can't access via JavaScript, making stolen tokens useless. In Express, it's this simple. Now, even if an XSS attack happens, the attacker can't grab the token. One vulnerability neutralized. Next, deploy a content security policy CSP. Think of it as a bouncer for your website. It blocks unauthorized scripts from running. Add this meta tag to your HTML. Now, inline scripts like the one we injected earlier won't even execute. Third rule, never trust user input. Sanitize everything. Use libraries like DOM Purify for the front end or sanitize HTML for the back end. This strips out malicious code before it hits your database, closing the door on XSS at the source. Finally, protect against compromised third-party scripts with subresource integrity SRI. It checks if a file has been tampered with. If a hacker alters the script on the CDN, the browser refuses to load it. Defense in depth. So, here's how it all went down. The attacker strolled in, found a juicy JVT token just sitting there in local storage, like a key left on the front porch. With a quick XSS trick, they snatched it. Then, they waltzed right into the victim's account like they owned the place. No password, no sweat. Game over, not even close, because we can fought back. First, we took that token out of JavaScript's reach entirely, locking it up in an HTTP-only cookie. No more sticky fingers. Then, we set up a content security policy, like a bouncer for our site, kicking out any sketchy scripts trying to sneak in. Next, we scrubbed every bit of user input squeaky clean, so no sneaky code could slip through. And finally, we double-checked every third-party script with sub-resource integrity, making sure nobody messed with our stuff along the way. At the end of the day, XSS plus sloppy token storage is like handing hackers a free pass. But now you've got the playbook to shut them out. HTTP only keeps your token safe. CSP slams the door on rogue scripts. Sanitization cleans up the mess before it starts. And SRI makes sure your third-party tools play by the rules. Bottom line? Never trust the front end with your tokens. Treat them like crown jewels, because to hackers, that's exactly what they are. If you found this helpful, check out my other videos. Thanks for watching and see you next time.